Last week, somebody asked me, but how does Vim actually make you more productive? This is a great question because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about Vim out there. And a lot of times it's spread by Vim users themselves who are claiming that they're more productive than you know, everybody else for some reason. So I work as a software developer, which is what I assume that most people watching this video do as well. And I actually don't claim that Vim makes me any more productive at doing my job than the average person. This is kind of a silly argument to me because I feel like you can be productive using almost any tool that you're comfortable, that you're familiar with. Sure, there may be specific situations where one tool may be better than the other, but overall, if someone is telling you that they're more productive than you because they use Vim, you should be skeptical. Yes, I do like to use Vim, and there are definitely things that I love about it, but that's not really important for you or for anyone else to be worried about. For me, it just boils down to the fact that I like it and that I'm having fun editing text. Diving in and learning about Vim's features has been really rewarding to me, and I'm realizing that knowing how to use Vim well is a lot like becoming better at using a programming language in general. It's just another way to think about and solve problems. For example, day 21 from last year's Advent of Code problem set was actually pretty easy to solve using Vim by just using some of the features like macros and substitutions. This actually felt more natural to me than writing, say, an Elixir program, for example. And don't get me wrong, I really love writing Elixir code, but let me show you what I mean. I'm trying to evaluate this root level expression, but it's not immediately clear what values each of the labels have, because most of them are defined in terms of other expressions. So I have this tree or graph type of structure where I have to first evaluate all of the dependent or child expressions before I can evaluate the parent. This is more or less what's happening in my Elixir code that I've been showing. But I can pretty much just cheese this problem by repeatedly substituting each label with its corresponding value throughout the whole file until only the root node is left. I'll start by moving the root expression to the top of the file. I can locate and perform the move in one go using the global command. So g root is what I'm searching for and I want to move it to the zeroth position. I'll just keep track of what we've done on the left-hand side here in a, in a file. I'll just put the commands that we've done as we go. It'll come in handy a little bit later. All of these lines have the same structure, but different values, of course. So I want to repeatedly capture both the label, which is on the left of the colon, and the expression, uh, which is on the right of the colon, from each line. I can start by recording a macro, so QQ to begin recording, then I'll yank into the named register A, which I'll use in a moment. So double quote A, yank word. I'll hit capital W to jump to the start of the expression and yank it all into the named register B. So double quote B, yank dollar sign. Now that I have the values that I want, I can use them in the substitute command. So colon percent S. I'll use a percent sign since I want the command to apply to every line. And then I'll do a, a pound sign. So there's three main parts of the substitute command and I'll use a pound sign to separate them. In the first part, I'll call up the value from the named register A using control R A. So this is what I wanna match on. And then the next part is what I wanna replace it with. So I'll do another pound sign for the next section. So I wanna do some parentheses and then I wanna paste in the value from the named register B. So I'll call that up with control R B and then I'll close the parenthesis. And this is just to help ensure that the order of operations work out uh, later on, which you'll see in a bit here. Finally, I'll throw on a G flag to make sure that the match uh, can match more than one occurrence on each line. So the macro is still recording and before I stop it, I want to make sure that I can jump back to where my cursor was before the substitute command happened. So I'll do uh, two single quotes to do that. And then I'm going to delete the line and then finally quit recording. And now I want to replay this for every line in the file except for the root level expression, which is at the top. So I'll use the norm command. Two comma dollar sign is the range. And that's to exclude the very top line. So now I can do norm at Q to replay the macro across every line in the file except for the top. 
Now you can see that the root expression is all that remains. So I can use the expression register to actually perform the math. So I'm going to hit capital W to get me to the actual expression portion. And then I'm going to C dollar sign to clear everything into an unnamed register. And then I'll enter the expression register with control R equals. Now I want to paste in everything from my unnamed register. So control R double quote, I'll hit enter. 152 is in fact the correct answer for this smaller example input file. So now that it seems like this solution will work, I can run all these steps against the, the actual input file, which is much larger. So I'll go ahead and copy uh, this real input file. We'll delete this stuff, paste the new one in. I can just source this solution uh, that we have here on the left and it will execute it against the input file on the right. And this will take a minute because it's, it looks like it's done, but it's not. It's thinking real hard because there's a gigantic block of text that it's trying to evaluate in that expression register. There we go. So I'm gonna copy this and go over here. And there it is, there's the answer. Anyways, you can do some really cool stuff if you strive to understand the tools that you're using and no matter what tool it is that you may be using, don't let other people try to tell you what you should and should not be doing with those. Don't let other people tell you what is productive and what is not productive. Just focus on trying to figure that out for yourself, doing what works best for you, and enjoying yourself.